the awesome secrets about lysine is that it's actually involved in a lot of epigenetics. And so when we think about epigenetics, you might think about DNA modifications and modifying DNA in order to regulate when genes are expressed or kind of used. But a lot of that actual regulation, that epigenetic regulation, is happening on the proteins that the DNA is wound around. Chromosomes have your DNA, but then that DNA is actually wound up really tight so that it can fit in your cells. And it's wound up around little proteins called histones. And those histones have these tails. At the ends of them, they kind of like stick out. And those tails have a lot of lysine residues. And so the lysine is now going to get the starring role because that lysine can be modified. Often this modification is done via acetylation and methylation. And so you either have an acetyl group placed on you or you've got a methyl group placed on you. And this is placed on the lysine of the histone. And that is then going to make it so that the DNA is easier to unwind or harder to unwind. So if we think about DNA, we've got this negatively charged backbone and the amino acid lysine is positively charged. Your histone proteins are therefore very positively charged, which allows the DNA to stick to it and not kind of like fly off. But this also hides the DNA from things like RNA polymerase, which needs to actually access the DNA in order to use it to make messenger RNA to make proteins from. And so if the DNA is tightly wound around those histones, then you're not going to be able to access the DNA. But what if you were to ax the charge of the lysine? You could ax the charge of the lysine by acetylating it. So acetylation is going to make it so that you kind of neutralize that lysine so that the DNA is now not as tightly held onto that histone. And now you can get it so that you actually get more access to the DNA. So acetylation of the histones that the DNA is wrapped around is often associated with higher levels of usage of that gene region Whereas if we have methylation, there we maintain the charge, the lysine remains, it's positively charged, and so you still get the DNA stuck. And so methylation is often used to kind of silence genes and gene regions. It's really not quite so simple. The methylation, the acetylation, these various markers are actually serving as kind of recognition sites in a lot of cases for chromatin modelers. So you actually have proteins that will recognize these modifications and come and actually help move over the histones or keep things compacted, bring in RNA polymerase, these various things to help make the DNA more hidden or less hidden. And so all of that is going to alter how the DNA is used. And yes, you do get some modifications of the DNA DNA itself with things like methylation, but a lot of the regulation of gene usage is actually happening at the level of methylating and acetylating the histone proteins on their lysine 